going on, Re? Welcome back to Weekly Cheddar. Jake Shavink here with you guys. It is Friday. Back to the normal schedule. Should be a lot of fun. You know, Jarell and Omer got some got some comments in here. Um, pretty early. Uh, this was like way earlier this week. Uh, Jarell talking about he's here for DBs and linebackers. Uh, talking about Cam Kinchins running that four three and plays faster in game. There's a no doubt about that. Uh, and Omer talking about drafting a lot of guards. Today, uh, the plan for you guys, we're going to go through some pro day stuff. We're going to talk about that a little bit. You know, Q&A will obviously be there as well. And then we'll get into a mock and finish up the evening. So, yeah, um, I think SDM40 basically putting out um, the comment that that we want to address first. Uh, Good isn't drafting a two and a half RAS guy. Yeah, it, it's very probable that this is the case which I know a lot of people were really, really excited uh, about Tyler Newbin, right? And and so I brought it up as a strong safety. We get up to a 3-5-4 um, unofficial, uh, it's just listed as unofficial before these, uh, before they get pulled in, right? And, and all that. So, yeah, I mean, this is tough. This is is, is very tough. Uh, the, the dream feels like it's it's pretty much dashed at this point with Tyler Newbin. Uh, to Green Bay, although I mean the the production, you know that's it's very evident the playmaking skill set, how much he can, I think contrasts pretty well with someone like uh, Xavier McKinney on defense. It would be really really nice to have that, uh, but it is what it is. I mean, you know we're gonna probably have to pivot elsewhere, and there there are gonna be a lot of options. In the draft, Cole Bishop, Keaton Oladapo are two of them that I think Packers fans are pretty familiar with by now, but but should be extra familiar with when the draft rolls around. Uh, yeah, Mitch, I did see the uh, the Lions um, and and Camp Sutton not ideal. Um, they gonna have some more cornerback need, I think. How's it going, Chris? Here's Joy. Nothing happened to the Adonai Mitchell vid. It's just uh, behind on a lot of stuff work-wise and, and otherwise with a lot of other commitments uh, for draft seasons. So, yeah, just it, it'll be here. It'll be there. Uh, right now, it's it's on the docket for Monday. Uh, it should lead everything off. So, yeah, Newbin, I, I think, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I didn't expect this type of testing. I thought it would be more than the five to six, maybe a little over six uh, in terms of his RAS. Because I just didn't think you saw like an elite athlete on film. What I thought you saw was in a was elite instincts and processing skill set on film. And that's that's what makes Newbin who he is as a prospect over anything else. So I do think that you know it it's tough for Newbin, but I, I do think this this safety class takes a little bit of a hit with him and Kinchin's, you know, kind of kind of blowing it in terms of the testing. Now I know there was talk about Newbin like you know, basically with him, it was, it's just kind of like, okay, coming off a knee surgery, should he have tested? And that's, that's an important question. Like if he wasn't fully hundred percent healthy, like I'm just not sure why I, I get it wanting to compete, wanting to be tough out there, but at the same time, right? Like there's still, you know, kind of like the agent should be kind of nudging you to be like, I know you want to compete out there, but at the same time, you know, if you, if you think you're going to do this, what we see on on the screen here, like, Maybe it's just, hey, let's do the private workout. Let's schedule a little bit later. Let's make sure everything, you know, is 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 good to go health-wise. And, and then you see the testing numbers. Because I, I feel like they would probably improve from this. But is what it is. Tyler Newbin slips. He's still so much better in games than in his pro day showing. I think he's he's better. Um, I don't think he's elite, but I think he's he's good enough to get to get it done. So yeah, just not the best showing, which is fine. Um Ayers Joyce says, I only see Wiggins as a cornerback we should target in the first. Don't love McKinstry. Don't want offensive tackle. Wiggins is an interesting one. He did get the weight up to 182 at the pro day. Um, but, you know, it's 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 definitely a little bit of an outlier uh, in terms of the weight for Goody and for the Packers in general. We'll see how that goes. Derek, how's it going? Says, uh, appreciate you showing up, first of all. Uh, always good. Uh, to see you there it says most underrated safety prospect. 
It's a good question. Uh, in terms of like where the boards have him and where he's ranked on a lot of things, I feel like it's Oladapo from Oregon State. Uh, I know now you start to see the steam building, I think, with with Dadrian Taylor Demerson, who I think is is really, really solid. Uh, I know everybody's now talking up Cole Bishop. I don't know if he's the most underrated because I still think he's listed at like consensus safety five or six, which I don't think is that underrated from where he kind of should be. So I, I just think like you get, you know, weight on the board with with Oladapo, with uh, Malik Mustafa as well from Wake Forest. And I think as I think Trey Taylor is another one that, you know, be nice to have more film on him and just you know be able to see more from him but i mean there's no guarantee that a thorpe award winner is is gonna you know project well to the nfl we kind of saw that kobe bryant from um cincinnati right opposite sauce gardner you know hasn't really panned out was a day three pick so there's no guarantees with that yeah i i like mustafa as well uh, peter stone i don't see him in chat tonight but uh he's a huge huge fan so yeah, Mustafa, I think you, you see a lot of the range. You see a lot of him driving on crossers and just playing really well in the box and around the middle of the field. And I think it's it's a good shout. I really do. Um, yep, safety class is bad. Cole Bishop, main target, for sure, for sure. Mitch says, I wonder if the Packers might move Stokes to safety. That's, that's interesting. Um, I don't know. I, I just feel like him in transition has always been an issue. And with that, I think you get, you know, in a lot of positions at safety where you have to be changing direction. You have to be moving really fluidly and, and doing a lot of different things at once. You have to have to have your eyes on a lot of stuff. And I just I just don't think Stokes uh, can handle that. I, I think he needs to be in, you know, a, a lot of cover three looks where he can kind of just turn and run and he's got the deep third. And that's that's kind of the responsibility because I yeah, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure how he's going to fit in, truthfully. Uh, Ayers Joy says, Mitchell or Latu, the main BPA guys we should target, could viably be there for twenty at 25 for Green Bay. Yeah, uh, Mitchell's going to be a tight one. Seems like Brian Thomas is consensus wide receiver four right now and that he could be going you know, in the top 15. So, yeah, Mitchell, Latu. Um, stay tuned for those uh, sub to the YouTube channel on Latu. Some coming out, I think, a little bit after the show will end, which will be cool on him um ron sandville says what data they use per position it's just it's it's everything i don't know how i forget how far back it's compiled but it's that score is relative to all of those metrics that they put in and they churn out the score you know relative to where he would line up for the rest of the safeties uh all time in terms of athletic testing so you know i don't think it's i don't know how it's weighted it could be pretty equally weighted across the board with size speed explosion and agility but it's just it's data from all the combine and, and testing numbers so says chance stokes does not make the final roster that's possible yeah 182 in parentheses he's thin he's definitely thin he is thin uh but he's he's darn good in coverage that's for sure i don't know if he's the he's, he's close to the best in coverage wiggins is so yeah i i think I, i'm excited for him though I can't wait to see where Wiggins lands. Um, what data? Oh yeah, to run the baseline. Did you? Yeah, we we went over that. Uh, SDM forty says is the gene running for teams on visits. That's a good question. Yeah, I know. I I think everybody wants to know what the numbers are, right? Uh, for for the gene right now because you know safety's thinning, right? You know he would be really nice at nickel. He'd be really nice at safety. I think be nice to have those testing numbers but like ultimately i think you see a good enough athlete on film that it would be nice to confirm it with the testing but ultimately like you know i i like him so and i think i'd be okay with him being a pick at 25 I'm torn because i think they're just if you're playing him at safety yeah if you're playing him at corner i'm not sure um derek agrees with mustafa yeah uh Got a bishop says Ayers Joyce is being a hard hitting safety and linebacker could get away with a lightweight guy in Wiggins. Yeah, he's he's really good closing. He's really good in transition. He's just got great instincts. Enough ball production there. Yeah, he, he's a really good player. 
Mitch says Demerson and Mustafa are getting a lot of buzz. That's good news. Uh, I mean, De- Demerson's a heck of a playmaker for sure. Um, Bullard, uh, Bullard, I struggle with a little bit because I think he, and I know you didn't mention it, Mitch. I was just relative to where the safety class and what we're looking at. I think Bullard's fine. I think he's really good with assignments. I'm not sure he's the best with back and range. And so if you're not going to play him back there, I feel like you should be playing him at nickel. So, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough uh, with, with Bullard, but he is a very solid player. For sure. Uh, who is the UDFA star of the 2024 class? Say Carson Steele. I I think that's a good good it's a good one to put in. I, I I don't know why Steele wouldn't be drafted, to be honest, but that's that's a good one. Uh just try to meander down the consensus big board into the three hundreds and see where anybody's listed. But as of now, I think Steele's a good one. Let me see if I can get down to the 300s here and see if there's anybody in that UDFA range that I think would be solid. I mean, I don't think Kimani Vidal is going undrafted, even though he's listed at like 280. Oh, Quantez Stiggers from Toronto Argonauts, the CFL guy. If he doesn't get drafted, uh, I think he would be a really quality undrafted free agent. He hasn't played in college. He went straight to the CFL. I think he was he was the I think he won rookie of the year in the CFL as well. So a corner to watch for sure. Um I, I just I'm trying to think of who who's going to be a UDFA because there's a lot of guys in the three hundreds, at least on NFL mock draft databases consensus big board that I'm like, man, not sure why they're this low. Cause like Jalen Sundell is in the three hundreds, which I I feel like most of us in chat, we've kind of talked a lot about Sundell when we do the mock drafts. It's kind of like uh, he should be in the, he should be a pick in the the one seventies, one eighties. So, yeah. Mike Hebring, what's going on? Says Newbin has to be off the board, right? I think so. At least, at least in the first two days. I think at least in the first two days he's off the board. Uh, day three, maybe all bets are off. Uh, but I, I think history has told us that he is. Uh, but it says are also are we sure Cooper to Gene meets the athletic thresholds? I think he would. I, I think that the first off, the size is good, right? He's like in that six one ish, two hundred and five to two hundred and seven pound range. Uh, I think he would he would bench a decent number, would be my guess. I think the explosion stuff, um, you know, when you look at the vertical and the broad jump, I think he'd be really good there. I think he'd be really good in the 40. So I think when you when you kind of add all those up even if the agility grade wasn't super good i still think you'd get to gene especially at corner and even at safety i think you'd still get him in that elite res range uh, what's really fun is you can go input that and like oh i think to would run this and jump this and like you get some some numbers in there that you could kind of um tweak a little bit here and there and just like give him a number maybe we'll do that at, at, before we do the mock draft we can try that with the gene uh but i do think he would meet them for sure. Uh, Ayers Joyce says Stokes is in a safety. Mike Hebring says Stokes is a corner, just not a good one. Uh, Ayers Joyce says Colson is a must. At least they think Colson is a must in the second. Seems to shed tackles pretty well. More head up tackler. Yeah, I think he's I think he's solid as, you know, coming downhill, you know, playing that sort of, you know, early down linebacker that we kind of label that as, right, as the guy who's Flowing downhill, early second down, you know, first and second down, I mean, and, and kind of, yeah, limiting big plays against the run, you know, getting off blocks against centers, guards. Like, he, sh- he should be he should be decently successful in that role. Um, Can the Packers accept a player like Gray at middle linebacker despite the size issues? Let me get the Cedric Gray card up. Let's do it. Get the card up. Okay. So Cedric Gray on the card. Six one and a half, two thirty-four. Yeah, he's not the tallest, right? Quay was in that six four range. Two thirty four is not bad. That's where I think Campbell was around that number. Right? Ran well. RES is solid. Uh the vert really nice there. Like I do think. It would only be the height, I think, is the biggest question mark per se. Uh, I think I, I don't know if Gray's the 
you know, I think it's a fair argument to put Gray in that best off ball linebacker in the class. I think that's a fair kind of assessment of, of Gray and, and where this linebacker class is at. I think that he's he's very much up there in the rankings. I think he's higher than a couple guys that that are probably higher than than Gray on the consensus board, truthfully. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. The size, that's the question mark, right? Because that size normally you would say is like that guy's playing further and further away from the ball rather than middle linebacker. Uh, the arm length's not bad. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would hope the Packers would accept a player like gray. I would hope they would. I would hope so. I'm not positive though. It's a kind of a 50, 50 thing, which is why it's a good question. Um, so is it true that Zach Zinter was a riser before the injury? I do think he was talked about a lot more before he got hurt, um, in the, I believe the Ohio state game. I think he's just a well-rounded right guard. Um, and he has flown a little bit under the radar, uh, as he's gotten back healthy. PFF grades were decent across the board. I think he kind of fits more of the pass protection mold than the true mauler type, right? He's he's built. Let's see if I can find his measurements really fast here. I think I could because, yeah, he is. He is very much in that. Here we go. At least at the combine, he might play a little bit heavier than this. And I think it, he probably does. At the combine, he was 6'5 and 7'8", 309, 33 and a half inch arm length. Like that's. That's right in the wheelhouse for Green Bay. I think they would I, I I assume he's probably playing more in the you know 312, 315 range, which I think is very much right in the wheelhouse of, of, a, of a Packers player. The problem is usually Green Bay likes to see tackle experience, even with their interior guys. It's very rare that they don't. Uh it has happened before, not a lot, but it has happened. But normally they'd like to see a player like Zinter have tackle experience. However, all the size stuff, right? And I, I assume probably the athletic thresholds would be good enough to where I think Green Bay would consider him. I still think they should in the mid rounds. I think that's a solid, at least at the very, very least, competition for right guard. So, yeah, I think we're we're kind of talking about the right guards a lot, right? Like we're talking about Haynes, we're talking about Mahogany, right? We're talking about McCormick, even though he's a kind of a left guard, right? He is. But we're talking about all these guards, and it's usually like, okay, we should be looking at tackle experience, but. Zinter is definitely one that has flown under the radar a little bit. Uh, Frank Gore Jr. is a, a nice shout for, I think, the answer to the question of the UDFA star. It's possible Gore Jr. doesn't get drafted, right? He's like 5'7", 199, so he's not the biggest. Uh, but if he does get undrafted, I think him and if Steele as well, I think there are some going to be some potential running back gems that you don't have to draft, which I think is is nice for Green Bay, a team that you know they've kind of got two guys, the two power guys, if they want you know, more of a foil to what they have in the building. I think that would be, I think that's, you know, you know, they could look to UDFA for, for running backs. If they believe that the running back class is going to kind of be pushed aside more than it usually is right. And especially in these recent years. So yeah, possible. Kevin white says a sleeper, strong safety late is Washington's Dominique Hampton. Should we pull up the, let's see if we got a card for him. Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? Shall we get to his? Yes. Look at that. Got an RES card. Yeah. Love the size. 451 official. Vert. All that. That looks good. That looks nice. Be honest. I haven't taken a look at Hampton too much yet. Um, but I've kind of shifting gears a little bit from some of the offensive positions. Uh, kind of finished the receiver stuff, which is good. Want to get to some of these later on safeties. Hampton's been mentioned quite a bit. Definitely want to get to this film and check him out. So I, Kevion, I will take a look at him for sure. Very, very soon. Um, cause I'm going to have some safety videos out soon as well on some of the guys. So he's a good one to add six, two and three, ace two fifteen, and an arm length. That's bigger than some of the edge rushers too, which is that's, that's pretty good. This is, um, you know, the athletes is kind of this comment says, I mean, they're, they're getting better. The, the Washington's built, rebuilt their program really nicely. 
Um, but there's, you know, four, five, one, some, some nice range. Apparently Hampton has tackling issues. Okay. Good to know. Uh, but this is a nice athletic profile for sure. Um, okay. Airs joy likes the value of Andrew Phillips at, in the second. Wow. Um, really athletic, right? Yeah. I think he looked really fluid and mobile, right? Like that's, that's kind of where he was lauded. Yeah, here we go. Bring up RAS cards. Um, five ten and three quarters, one ninety. Yeah, I think this is probably more of a nickel guy, at least based on the size, right? So, yeah, I think we've we've kind of talked about him a, a decent bit about the third and fourth round for him, and I think he kind of got his name on the board, at least in the media, as far as they're concerned with with his performance in Mobile. So, I don't know about the second for me personally. Uh, I, I'd, I'd consider him more of the middle rounds, but yeah, I, um, yeah, I like Phillips. I just doubt he's going to be there when we pick in the third. That's fair. That's possible. You never know a little, a little trade up, you know, in the third round, Green Bay has done that before. Uh, Ron Sandville says Jerry and Jones made a top 30 visit. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. This is the type of like tenacious slot corner that I would love to see the Packers get. And, and wait to see this. So, Mike Hebring, I will get to your super chat momentarily. Uh, just trying to scoop through the rest of this really fast. Um, Jerry and Jones, 5'11 and 7 ace 190, and obviously has a lot of this stuff going for him. Uh, is there an official one? Maybe there's not. Yeah, there is. Here we go. Okay, 438 official, 39 and a half, 10 9. My goodness. My goodness. But yeah, 30 inch arm length, that kind of. For some NFL teams, that probably kicks him inside to the nickel. That's where he played, though, at Florida State, right? For for so for most of his time last year. So I think he, uh, yeah. If if they're like kind of hesitant on Nixon, and maybe he just ends up being a better returner than he is a uh, a nickel corner. Yeah, I I don't see why not. Love to have a player who plays physical and plays tough like Jones in that secondary. Mike Hebring, I appreciate the super chat, says, my opinion, the Packers need two starters in rounds one and two at interior offensive line and linebacker. Yeah, I think it seems like everybody's kind of building, and you look at the mock drafts, and I was going to bring this up before we get onto the mock, and I still might, of kind of how some of the mocks that are doing full, you know, more three, four, five round mocks are, are kind of positioning the Packers with their stuff. I'm seeing a lot of Peyton Wilsons. I'm seeing a lot of Edron Coopers in mock drafts. Now that doesn't mean they're right, but it, it's the media seeing that need and maybe the, you know, the media finds out, you know, and it's, it stinks that DJ doesn't do usually two round mocks, which, which is unfortunate, but with Brugler stuff, I think they're hearing more that, that green Bay, you know, is, is, is in on the linebacker class. It's just, if, are they going to be the first one to, to kind of make a pick there? Uh, there's just wild reports about where Edger and Cooper could possibly go. I've heard in the twenties, uh, which, you know, there's always surprises like that every year. Some people think he's deserving of it. Some people don't. He's pretty polarizing as, as the consensus linebacker one right now. But I do think like Cooper, Wilson, Colson, Gray, I think are the ones they should be looking at. Maybe Trotter, but I, I'd rather see one of those four. And then I think you're looking later. I think you're looking later with a Bookie Watson, with a Traven Wallace, with a Jalen Ford, right? With a Darius Wasau. Like th those are the players like they, there should be two or three linebackers that Green Bay picks in this draft. We'll see how it goes. Uh, that linebacker like running back could be another one where it's like, all right, we know that like we can get this guy in a draft free agency. And that's, you know, that's that's interesting. I, I think interior offensive line, I imagine, is still going to be derived from tackle experience. But yeah, I, I'm with you. The, the interior of the offensive line is um a position that has much needed help. Appreciate the super chat. Appreciate that a lot, Mike. Thank you. I know some of y'all are going to be heading over. Wait, I don't know if there's PTA tonight. Maybe there isn't. Anyway, um, Tanner Bordellini looks like a Packer. Maybe Packers seem to avoid Badger Lyman ever since the Favre era. They did draft Cole Van Lannan uh, on day three, I believe, recently in, in a few a few years ago, perhaps. Uh, so I know they did draft one. But yeah, Bortolini being able to kind of line up everywhere, that has to be in the minds, you know, of Green Bay, where it's with Graham Barton, it's kind of like, oh yeah, he 
we think he can do all of these things because he's really only played left tackle and center, much like Sundell has from North Dakota State, where it's like borderline is like, okay, I've played here, 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 right? I've been a swing tackle. Like they see all this, and they go, oh, wow, this is like as, and maybe Green Bay is saying this, this is as quality of O line depth as we can find, potentially, you know, starting around that third round where he could fill in at a lot of spots for us and has done it already, right? As whereas we're projecting it for others. So, yeah, I think Bortolini feels like somebody Green Bay's interested. I know, I believe they were, yeah, I believe they were at the Packers or they were at the Badgers Pro Day. Bortolini, Braylon Allen, right? Nobody, not many people want to hear that. Some do, some don't. Um, but yeah, Bortolini, nice player. Uh, what do the Packers put into fullback position moving forward? I I still contend that it would be nice to have Ben Sinnott doing that from Kansas State. That's my guy at tight end. Uh, I think he had the he had the H back build and play style, and then he added some 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 weight to the frame, and he looks he looks pretty good at two fifty four running around, running routes, doing a lot of different things, and I think maybe he could be that. Maybe Green Bay setting up for him to be that. I would love that, but it's a position that that we're gonna have to see. Uh, you know, I'm, I haven't gotten to the tight ends that I am going through right now going like, okay, this guy's a good H back. This guy's a good H back, but I'm assuming I'm going to find a few of them down the stretch, uh, in the later rounds where I go, oh yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And it could happen. It definitely could happen. How's it going? Mark Zambito. What's happening? Um, Pete M says, do you think the Packers package multiple picks with the 11 that they have? Maybe. If somebody falls into the teens that they weren't expecting, I think it's possible, right? I think for some people who don't like, don't really don't like offensive tackle in the first round, close your ears for a second. I think if Olu Fashanu starts falling into the teens, I think the Packers are going to at least call and inquire. They're going to inquire about moving up. I think they're they're the ideal trade partner for Green Bay exists. It's Seattle at sixteen who needs picks who will be willing to move down. And that's a nine spot move up, which is where Green Bay moved up with um, Seattle back in 2018. It was a nine spot move up from 27 to 18. Might be able to do it again uh, this year. So if they're moving up, I think it's Fashanu. Maybe it's one of the corners in, in Arnold or Mitchell, but it feels like Fashanu makes a lot of sense as the player to go get right premium position, play tackle. I know, I know everybody's saying don't take tackle in the first because. You can get it in day three. You can. You can get tackles on day three. Packers have proven that. At the same time, we love to look at the hits they've gotten on day three rather than the misses. And we keep forgetting that that plenty of, of, of offensive linemen are misses on day three. But we only kind of focus on Zach Tom and Rasheed Walker right now and, and Bakhtiari, of course, without like, okay, bigger picture, like how much is the hit rate really on day three? Right, relative to like where are a lot of the Pro Bowl caliber talents being drafted at tackle, a lot of them at the top doesn't mean there are misses there as well. But I do think you're you because usually offensive linemen, the NFL has a little bit more figured out. There's still obviously guys that that become busts, and that's that's for every position, right? But like when you look at like quality offensive tackles, usually they don't leave uh, the first round. Now, would I would I want to do that? Not necessarily. I think there's plenty of of talent across the board that could fall to 25. And I, I think, you know, even a move back to 28 to 30 to 32 can net you some more capital, right? You can get more aggressive on day two if you want to. Like, it gives you a lot of options. And I think there's going to be enough talent there where, he's, you know, you don't have to kind of force the issue a lot and go, yeah, this is, this is what we need. We need to go get it. But if they do it, I feel like it's going to be for one of those two guys. Right. It's it's probably gonna be Arnold or Mitchell, one of the two. And then the other would be would be Fashan. Um, what do I think of Jalex Hunt as an edge rusher? I, I think there's enough athletic talent to work with. I do think he was a little a little overwhelmed in mobile, to be honest. Uh just because, you know, you know, he, he what is it? It's, uh, it's Houston Christian or Houston Baptist, I think is where he plays. It just felt like he was overwhelmed by the tackles out there. There's some speed. There's there's some to work with. I think he can land the, you know, occasional swipe or, or move at the top of his rush to kind of flatten that that route to the quarterback. Obviously, you know, it, it's a big jump, and he he makes a big jump at the Senior Bowl. It was nice to have that for him to kind of a little litmus test of where am I at relative to where the top you know incoming rookies are at. 
think he's going to need some time uh, to kind of hone his game, which is kind of almost a perfect thing for for, for Green Bay because it, it feels like they're in a great spot to like, oh, yeah, if we want to draft an edge rusher later or even earlier, maybe to to kind of stash like they could they could do that, especially with with all the picks they have. And if it, maybe they're moving back and they're getting one, maybe Marshawn Nealon becomes the guy. Right. Really quick. I want to. With for Jalex Hunt, I want, just want to get his numbers. Six three and three quarters, two fifty two. Okay, thirty four and and three eighth inch arm length. That's pretty good. One six split is outstanding. So is the force. It yeah, yeah. I mean he's he he likes to win high side and inside moves and all that. Like win with athleticism, right? And the moves will come later. At some point, though, the moves have to come now and like to, to play right away. And so that's where I think he becomes a little more developmental. Mark Zambito says we probably need to trade down a little and pick up one or two picks in round three and four. I'm not opposed to that at all. Um, I, I agree with you on, on Phillips. I see the talent as well. I That's totally. I think that him and, and there are a few more, I think, corners that are still being underrated. Renardo Green's one of them uh, at Florida State, right? So, yeah. Oh, Mike's... Pete says he's been hearing that more lately about trading up. I gotcha. Okay. Um, Mitch says he wants both Cooper and Wilson. That'd be sweet. Would love that. Would love that. Uh, all Florida State defensive players coming in this draft are underrated. Yeah. I, Fisk, right. Verse, I think, is still probably like, you know, people have kind of moved off him a little bit. Still think he deserves to be at the top echelon of the edge rushers right now. I don't know. I don't know what the difference. I feel like a lot of people have cooled on Verse and Fashanu. Uh, but Fisk is a nice player, right? Renardo Green. I, I think Akeem Dent had a really, really nice pro day at safety. Another to watch for there. So, yeah, I, I think Florida State clearly had a really good defense. The receivers, I'm a little less, um, a little less excited about. Mike says the only two players in this draft I would trade up for would be Quinion Mitchell and Joe Alt. Yeah. I still think I'd trade up for Arnold personally. I still think I have Arnold as quarterback one ahead of Mitchell. It's it's darn close though. It is darn close. But yeah, usually it's like trading up a not significantly is is very QB related. <clears throat> uh, Mike says I would love Wilson and Cooper round one and two, and then get interior O line with the third pick at those top three and call it a day. I think that'd be pretty good, no doubt. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, again, there's going to be a lot of BPA involved and like, how does that go? So yeah, I, I think it'll be, I think it'll be interesting at those two positions, especially right. But I'm, I'm just fascinated to see what they do on defensive line, because I think, you know, Kenny extension slash, are we moving on? That question comes up. Are you a big believer in Brooks and in Wyatt? Maybe, yes. Um, does, you know, does Kobe Wooden move out to defensive end, right? There's a lot we want to figure out, and I think the draft is going to tell us that, but it's always fun to kind of work those scenarios and be like, okay, well, if they need defensive tackle, they want it, who are they going to go get? But it with, with the defined ones, yeah, it's, it is nice, Mike, to have an early pairing at linebacker when you do a mock for, for Green Bay. Never trade up in the first round unless you get QB. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, well, I mean, yeah, the trade up for Savage, but the trade up for Jair has been pretty, pretty good. But yeah, usually big moves you'd like to go uh, get, um, you'd like to go get a QB. Uh, Mike says, to be honest, I prefer trade down at 25. Yeah, I, I think there are plenty. And, and I think trading down would be a really nice, um, a really nice deal um, if, uh, it, when we get to this mock draft. Uh, to finish the show out brock says uh, first off brock how's it going welcome uh says pat go wide receiver at all maybe round three or later yeah i think you know i think the thing with with wide receiver first of all super fun to pick one at 25 by the way i love doing it uh is it irresponsible sure it is but you know i, I think it's i think it's going to be interesting how the packers view their room right now and I know the the answer to that and the prevailing answer is it's really good. Absolutely it is. The question is, is how is how is Watson's health, right? I know he's talked about the hamstring feels better, it's good. But like 
it's been two seasons now, and I feel like, you know, Reed and Wicks are kind of moving up the charts, right? Dobbs, I think, took a lot of development as a route runner, like, in, in his second season. And so, like, Watson's kind of, you know, moving a little bit further down the depth chart. I still think, you know, obviously I would want him out there in, a, in 11. Uh, you know, he, he's one of the three out there. But at the same time, like, okay, Bo Melton, nice deep threat, good play speed. Like, I think he is really, really quality depth right now at receiver. However, you know, you find your other Watson, your Brian Thomas, right? Your your Tez Walker, guys like that who, who are, you know, big play threats down the field. Jermaine Burton, who the Packers didn't meet with, who I have a, an RES thing up there. We may talk about that in a moment. There are some of these, you know, the, any flavor of receiver you want in this draft, you're getting. And it's not like last year's draft where it was like, hey, yeah, you can have every flavor, but you're probably not getting a lot of the guys with size. And this year it's like, no, no, we got bigs as well. So I don't, I don't hate it. I, I think Javon Baker would be super awesome in Green Bay. Really like his game. Uh, I think it's underrated right now. Uh, and that will reflect my rankings in the Cheesehead TV draft guide, by the way. So I wouldn't mind it. I think... I'm interested to see if they would, you know, consider Adonai Mitchell at 25. Brian Thomas is somebody who I think I go back and forth, whether I think he's a top five receiver in this class. I think he's got a lot of work to do other than being a, a, a deep threat, but I understand that vision too. Uh, yeah. I, I think it'd be, I think it'd be really, really nice to have more speed in the room. And so I'm fine with that. I, I really am. Uh, what do the Packers do at kicker? Uh, probably add competition personally. I would. I, I don't see why not. Even if it's a UDFA, a camp kicker, like just see what another guy can do. Um, Prince Capsison says, I like the trade back from 25 unless some can't miss cornerback tackle falls that far. Yeah. And I think obviously there's, there's not a lot of can't miss guys, right? I still think. I still contend that Arnold and Mitchell are the corners that like if somehow they were, you know, by, you know, a miracle that they're available at 25, no doubt about it. I think I'm, I'm in the Troy Fuatanu camp of, from Washington of like, if he's there, not, not too much hesitation from me. Um, other than that, like, I don't know where I'm at on Mims still. I'm trying to figure out where he's going to slide in the rankings. Uh, Barton, obviously positional flexibility is excellent. Guyton. Do I like that? I don't know. I, I'm wondering. I'm wondering what Green Bay thinks of of Kingsley Suamatia. Suamat. Su, oh, I keep forgetting if the I is sounds like I or it sounds like A, um, or sounds like E. I mean, but you know, from from BYU, guy who's played left and right tackle intrigues me because I think you know, really young player, developmental track that could be you know high ceiling. Like maybe he's the move at forty one. You know, like that, that might be what, what Green Bay's looking at. But yeah, I, I, I like that. I, I think the trade back is, is a good idea. Uh, Airsway says versus going to go early. Yeah, he might be Atlanta's pick, honestly. I think him or, him or, him or Turner first off the board. I think Latu's could probably going to tumble a little bit. So yeah. Uh, Jake, remember when we got driver in round seven when doing your mock? You got driver? Oh, I probably remember that. Um, was it the I forget which mock that was, but where we talked about he's like he's like driver, I think. I think so. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Slayton's contract is up. Maybe they don't want that big, big defensive tackle in there. Um, but like, you know, your Byron Murphy's and and Johnny Newton's, I mean, you know. A lot of the a lot of the the Pro Bowl defensive tackles have been round one picks. It's not you know perfect science, right? You get a Metabuike in there. Oh, and there's one other guy I can't think of on the list right now who is who is not a first round pick recently, but usually that's how it goes. I do not love Cooper's middle linebacker. I see him as an edge playing middle linebacker instead. I think the he's going to have to play further off the ball personally because I just don't think like him dipping around blocks is going to be the best you know consistent model of play from him but yeah is what it is uh we need more we need more guys to compete with S slayton than wyatt really yeah i just don't know how big they're gonna go at defensive tackle like you know um 
Oh, the kid from the guy from Texas A&M who's escaping my mind right now. Who we've talked about a decent bit. Um, oh, I can't. I, I cannot for the life of me think of of who it is. Um, but like, yeah, I think he's in like the three thirty area, which which you know that's that's where Slayton was. If if they want to do that, that makes sense. Uh, but lightweight's often where they've gone in that 300 to 310 ish area. So Rajen says, I like Hicks to compliment McKinney. Jaden Hicks, yeah, there's some inconsistencies there, but you know, when he's more in, in the box than in coverage, he's still got a nice wingspan, can make some plays, right? You know, he's got decent ball skills. Um, but yeah, I think Hicks Hicks has been one that's been linked there a lot. He's been picked a lot in mock drafts. Brugler, guys NFL.com. He's been mocked there a lot. Um, I don't think they have to pick a wide receiver, right? I don't consider that a waste at all, but that's where we agree to disagree. Um, boy, if it takes Watson four years and you moved up to the 30s for him, it's tough. But I, I know they want that size and speed, so they weren't going to miss out on a player with that size and speed, which is fine. Like, that's, that, that is what it is. But I don't. I just don't think it's necessarily a waste. I, I think if it's value, if there's value, why not? Right. I I, I tend to agree, Air's Joy, with this. It's Mitchell's the primary target. Um, I, I think Mitchell's just more of a lateral ninja in terms of a full route tree right now than Thomas is. Uh, I'm just I I just can't for the life of me figure out why Mitchell did not produce more. Uh, because the traits are really really good really really good like i just it's it's crazy that he did not produce more and that's like it's got like red flags but like the film is good all the way back to his time at georgia where he dusted some bama corners you know in big games so i don't know it's 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 interesting um antonio says hi from spain hello awesome love new viewers and viewers from everywhere around the world that's really really cool says malik mustafa would suit perfect asks. I should say Malik Mustafa would suit perfectly a new half league defense. Yeah, I think so. I think that's, I think he would fit really nicely, you know, paired with McKinney in terms of let Mustafa roam around the middle of the field, let him, you know, do stuff in the box, let him use some of that range he has to, to pick up crossers, to work to the perimeter, you know, on screens, you know, the, the perimeter run game. Like I think, I think Mustafa can do a lot of that. So I, I do think he would suit the Packers really well. Uh, as the strong safety, I think you got to add some more competition. I think you, you know, I wouldn't be mad if they came out of the draft with two guys who can play more so in the box, like him and Oladapo. But yeah, I think I think Mustafa would would look pretty good. Harris Joyce says, but yeah, then the top crop of two to three guys don't draft. Go big one time with a home run pick or go home. Philosophy. I got you there, Mitch. Yeah, I think it's a it's a really good room. I think that's. And that's a fair thing, like rocking the boat, I understand, right? Of like, oh, we're bringing in a wide receiver one, like this is me, I'm the ball. That's why I don't think it necessarily has to be a wide receiver one. It's just like, okay, well, you bring in a Javon Baker who's got, you know, deep threat ability and route running ability. It's like, you know, just keep adding to a room where it's, you know, look where look how many places we can go. Um, we can kind of go uh, with the football out there. You know, they could even do like the hockey line thing almost that wide receiver where it's kind of like, ah, first line's off second line, get out there. Right. Like if it's the first lines, like Watson, uh, Wicks and Reed personally, that's where I would go. Uh, and the second, your second line is Melton Dobbs and like Javon Baker, like who or Melton Dobbs and Tez Walker. Like that'd be kind of sick. Two lines of like that. But I do think, I do think it's good to, to find a receiver. If you're going to draft one in this class, right. And kind of be like, well, we should, you know, kind of, take like a little bit of like okay well you know how does this guy fit personality wise with the room if they you know they're diving in deep and looking at guys like that yeah for sure yes they bring competition but they draft one i wouldn't i would not draft a kicker we're talking about not drafting wide receiver and we're talking about drafting kicker when i don't think we need to but you know yeah i think it's uh Cardi's an interesting, yeah. Cardi, I think, was one of the two. Cardi sounds, I think Cardi was the one of the two kickers down in Mobile. Fisk is the Florida State steal of this class if he goes outside the first. 
I think the Packers draft him at 25 and shock everyone. Okay, let's talk about it then since we have it up. Why it might not happen, just in case. Just in case, right? Okay, so Braden Fisk, Florida State, defensive tackle, obviously an elite athlete across the board, and you see that elite athleticism get off, change of direction, explosiveness, all that stuff. Uh, will they want him at 292 to be other, anything other than kind of a rotational guy? Will they want him with 31-inch arm length? Those are the question marks. But other than that, like, good pass rushing type at, at defensive tackle. Is he a good run defender? Uh, kind of iffy on that. But you want to be aggressive and get after the you know the quarterback, get after the run game, shoot gaps? Yeah, sure. Him and then the Packers also did, by the way, meet with Michael Hall uh, in the top 30, right? Michael Hall from Ohio State, another guy of this kind of, of profile. Same thing, a little more undersized as a defensive tackle, but with a lot of juice as a pass rusher. Maybe so. Maybe so. I think that'd be fun because he's not on my list currently of like, oh, I'm breaking this player down before the draft. So I'd be down for that. Oh, it's McKinley. McKinley. Yes, from, from Texas A&M. Thank you, Mitch. Yes, he is. He is right in that wheelhouse of like plays with good leverage, a bigger guy, defensive tackle. If they want to go that route, I could see that. Yeah, I got you from Florida State. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he's maybe he's not even the pick at 25. Maybe he's a pick at like 58 or 41. Like very possible. Very, very possible. Rod Jen says, I think Colson's actually a top linebacker. Wasn't impressed with Cooper's tape. Trotter and Gray were even better. Eichenberg's is nice. Eichenberg's is solid. Yeah. I think, Rod, if you've, you should look at Jalen Ford from Texas as well. Uh, look at Bookie Watson, Nathaniel Watson from Mississippi State. Um, yeah, it seems like everybody's very kind of in or out on, on Edger and Cooper, which is understandable, right? Like he, he is the consensus linebacker one right now. And I just go to NFL mock draft database.com. Look at the last like six years of consensus linebacker ones. They're not the top player in the class. Like they just aren't like it feels like everybody is like enthralled with the linebacker traits and like, look at how athletic he is. Look at this. Look at this. When it's like, oh, look, Junior Colson and Cedric Gray are like super smart players. Like that's that's got to be part of it. I, I couldn't for the life of me figure out like I think Devin Lloyd's been OK. Like Devin Lloyd took a little bit of a step last year. He was, I think, the consensus one two years ago. But like Walker goes first. Very traitsy, not as like, you know, finished product in terms of processing skill set. Leo Chanel was like a top tier athlete from Wisconsin who went all the way at the end of the third. Like it just feels like linebackers all over the place of how the league views it and what's what actually works. And, and they haven't figured that formula out. So I think I think Cooper's divisive because I think he has to play away from the ball more because he just doesn't get off blocks. He has to get around them. So it's, you know. It's it's a tough uh, it's tough assessments at linebacker honestly. Four years is the standard for wide receiver development. <sighs> yeah, kind of, but like in this era now, there's just way more free access to space, and like I think you just have to be better cognitively of like finding space versus zone and like attacking certain leverage. And I feel like there are just polished guys now more and more that are are figuring things out. So. I think four years can be the standard for maybe smaller school guys. That's fair. Um, after that, I mean, I think, and again, I think there's there's partially of that of the, of the wide receiver question, where it's like, what are we valuing versus like, you know, what what should we be valuing, right? Where you see these kind of very traitsy, very athletic players that do not have the refinement fizzle out a little bit and they were high picks and you know yes there's some of the you know too early to move on stuff and kind of i think packers fans experience that with Devonte adams but at the same time i think there is more there, there's a lot of players in this draft with more refinement that that i think you know we're looking at guys as upside guys like a coleman like a thomas right and and mitchell kind of even though the film's better when you look at your 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 Roman Wilsons, your Ricky Pearsalls, your Lab McConkeys, your um, Javon Bakers, personally, I feel like there's a lot more refinement with those, those those players. I think McMillan's gotten there as well. I think he was just hurt last year. We forget about him a little bit more, and so we're kind of like 
you know, maybe maybe looking at a little bit of the wrong things in the early rounds, but I, I know Ron Wolf talks about that in the, the four year rule for sure. But uh, yeah, um, tight end tight end might even be longer than four. I think we kind of look at tight end as four now, but it, it definitely could be longer than that even. So yeah, Colson Colson does very seem he does seem like no nonsense, very much so. Colson and Gray I think are are guys. Peyton Wilson, I think he has to play further away from the ball a little bit, but. I still like him as well. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hit the like button if you haven't already. I appreciate that um, for you guys. Uh, we're going to hit some more questions, but we're going to also get to the mock draft here pretty quickly uh, so that we can kind of hit that and, and on the way out. Brock says, what do you think about jo signing Justin Simmons to play box safety? Maybe he can handle that now. I, I just think I would rather have added trying to think who who I'm thinking of at this point but I just kind of I, I think it, it it could be beneficial for Green Bay to just maybe take the best combo safety that they that they like in the draft and just kind of fill it that way I think we've kind of seen the Packers take this route of like all right sign this guy in free agency maybe they'll maybe they'll go get Simmons it's possible um and then draft and draft and like they did that with signing Preston signing Zadarius and then drafting Gary uh, they could easily rebuild a safety room like that as well. I think bringing back Rudy Ford would be a nice must, but I think I think Green Bay might just like some box safeties in the draft over Simmons. I don't know what his price tag is going to be. We'll see on that, but like, you know, I, I do think that they're. I think they'd be better off trying to. Um, I think they're trying to go more budget at the position sorry that was, was trying to think through that um i don't know why i didn't like tez's film that much does airs joy to see wiggins shut him down yeah physicality physicality kind of made his head spin a little bit uh his route break transitions are not very good either um but he's a speedy deep threat who catches the ball well long strides rajan just said just draft vaki then you have a backup safety and a running back Fascinating player, Sione Vaki. Fascinating player. Yeah, I think it's yeah with Watson. I don't even think it's a development problem to this point. Like he, we we've seen the flashes of what he is. He's just not healthy, right? And yeah, there's there's still some uncertainty with that. And I think, you know, I'm not I'm not saying like I'm out on Watson, but I'm concerned. And so I think the new, as Ezra brings up here, the new strength and, and training staff could maybe get things right. Steve says, Steve, hello, says Caleb Williams will be the next Ryan Leaf. Perhaps. Very, very possible. Um, Mark Zambito says, we talk about two to three linebackers, one to two running backs, three to four O-line, two to three safeties, one defensive tackle, one defensive end, one fullback. Not enough picks to get quality players. Need to figure out the most important. Most important to me right now would be the trenches, uh, then linebacker, and then safety. Running back, I'm not that concerned. If guys like Carson Steele and Blake Watson and Frank Gore Jr. and Rasheen Ali are going to be undrafted free agents, great, excellent. Thank you for not picking them. Trenches, defensive tackle, defensive end, offensive line are tops right now. They are tops. Linebacker is very much way ahead of the rest in terms of its priority in second place, firmly. Then it's safety, I think. So, yeah. Uh, SDM40 says, if you draft wide receiver, you have to cut one. I, I'd be fine moving on from DuBose and uh, Toure. So, personally. But I, I, I get it. The room is full, but I, I think it'd be fun to add another one. Um, Watson's building NFL body. Some take longer, so he was young. Always going to be a long-term project. It's fair. Cooper equals Quay, says Brian Moffey. Brian, what's going on? Says similar play style skill sets. Yeah, and, and Cooper doesn't have the size that Quay does. So that's that's a you know another notch in favor of, of Quay, honestly. It feels like Cooper's too popular of a pick right now for Green Bay, and it's just it's gonna be like Colson. No, I, I don't think they're gonna cut Bo Melton at all. Uh Mark Zambia says wide receiver next year. Yeah, but that's not as fun. This is a fun class. Um so Let's see here. 
Watson is an FCS wide receiver, not FBS. Faster ways to new wide receiver. Standard still four years. Look at regression from 22 rookie of the year to 2023. 2022 rookie of the year to 2023. Who is the who regressed? Who are we talking about? I don't know who regressed. Um. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Devonta Smith really hasn't been injured that much, but uh, Puka Puka burst onto the scene really quickly. He certainly got developing to do, but like, why he succeeded is why he was excellent in college. Obviously, analytically speaking, the yards per route run were really really good. Um, but like his ability, you know, against zone to find space, you know, he had great body control and the ability at the catch point. You know, had versatile deployment, which we kind of covered in the film room last year. Um, there was a lot to like with Puka as, as kind of the sleeper. And that's not hindsight. Watch the video. It's the most popular video on the channel. Um, Rod Jen says, if you're looking to draft BPA, fill a need. D-line -line or O-line should be the first pick. Hoping for JPJ personally. Yeah, I, I think... It, I know a lot of people are hoping for JPJ. But I do think like... I think there's something to the fact that like Jordan loves coming out and saying this and other people have saying this, like they like Myers Myers is the guy. We don't have to agree on the outside, but I think we should at least take into account what they're saying about Myers, right? Like what Jordan love especially has said about Myers. So it'd be nice to have JPJ. Imagine if they're picking him, he's playing right guard to start the season. I, I do think that would be the case. I do think he starts at right guard. For Green Bay, I, I think Myers has the backing of a lot of people in, in the in, at 1265 Lombardi Avenue right now. Um, Heath benefited from the DeBose injury for sure. That's going to be a battle. It is. It is. I'm interested because I feel like Malik Heath, you know, bigger receiver, a little more wiry, though, but made some spectacular catches in the preseason. But once you got to the regular season, you kind of saw like a little bit of the the play strength concerns come up a little bit with him. Um, but I do think like there there is promise there. Julian Blackman's a nice shout by by Brian um, as a guy at strong safety, perhaps. Um, tackle guard from small schools. Any concern with them going to the pros or just longer to develop? I, I yeah, I think it's we've kind of talked about the longer development track. But like a Sundell, a Mason McCormick, a Garrett Greenfield, right? Like those guys are have a decent bit of talent that I would be plenty fine with swinging on i i think i think you saw it with spencer brown in buffalo is a really nice example of like wow the, it just looks too fast for him it looks too the game's too big for him right now year three was a nice jump for him it took till year three i believe right penning no sorry year two no no spencer brown was a th i think spencer brown was a third rounder in 21 I'm pretty sure he was in 21 i think that yeah I think I was right the first time. I, I think he made a nice year three jump. And so it took a lot of time for him. But I do think like, I think the learning curve will be a little less at guard than it would be a tackle personally. But I, I do think there is, I'm not concerned with picking guys like that. I, I think they're going to take multiple players anyway. So I have no problem with that. It says McKinney and Cole Bishop will be dangerous. Bishop won't be on their board is an interesting. I assume it's a, it's an arm length thing or something. Yeah, see, there you go. The, the South Dakota guys, Greenfield and McCormick and, and Sundell for sure. Greg Rice, how's it going? How are you? Um, yeah, just chilling, Greg. Just chilling. Um, hopefully going to do a mock draft here uh, shortly. Um, but yeah. Uh, Air Joyce says, Jordan Love said the pack is basically looking to go in for a Super Bowl. So we can't afford to just wait on Watson to get healthy. If Wicks were to miss time, that's why I'm in on Mitchell. That's fair. I, I do think there is, I still think there's like, you know, enough to where like Dobbs is a de decent player vertically. He's not my favorite, but Jaden Reed, man, get him down the field a little bit more truthfully. And I think Wicks can, Wicks has the suddenness and deception in his game to be able to have that, that capacity of like working to stack corners and winning down the field. But I do think Reed and Melton, I think are going to be important pieces with speed in that room, but I would love to add more speed with with the size that you kind of see from some of these guys in the draft. But I, I do think Watson should be good to go to start the season, of course. But it's just can he hold up, um, you know, over a full season? So 
Brian says Ben's going to be sad that he want that, that I want to move on from Touré. I just I don't know, man. I just don't I don't um I don't think that uh you know, he he's earned a spot. So um Elijah Jones must be on the Packers board. He was with Halfley in Boston College, does rate well. Yeah, PFF likes him. Um I'm looking for more film. I've only got a game on him. So I would I would like to see uh I would like to uh to see more on him. I'm gonna save I'm gonna save his even if I find more on him in case Green Bay does draft him, of course. So yeah. Uh Garrett Wilson regressed. I vehemently disagree. Vehemently. He was still as good of a separator as he was in the rookie season. Um especially on the inbreakers, especially on the slant routes, like all that stuff, he was still just as good. Uh, he just, um, you know, quarterback play regressed just cause production goes, gr- goes, uh, goes down. Doesn't mean the talent regressed at all. I vehemently disagree on this Garrett Wilson take vehemently, by the way. So, yep. Anyway, uh, what's up? Joseph says Cole Bishop's absolutely on Goot's board. I respect others opinions, but none of us are inside the war rooms. Well, then I don't know how you can say he's absolutely on the board. So, anywho, um, still don't know why Green Bay went with Owens over Tavarius Moore in the safety case. Moore had 34 inch arms like this game film before. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, Joseph says, in terms of Myers, they aren't uh, going to rip Myers publicly. Now, Phil, player falls out of favor with the coaching stuff like Yash, it might be that super pumped. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems like. It just seems like they're going to let the contract play out, which I believe ends this this coming season. So, you know, it's uh, yeah, it is what it is on Myers. I I still think I still contend that if they pick Jackson Bowers Johnson in the first round, he is playing right guard to start. So, Rod says maybe it's the games I watched, but Edron Cooper looked lost. Uh, I know Brian says Cooper is a late processor. Processing is a huge part of the game. Huge, huge, huge part of the game. Um, for sure. Uh, Donald, yes, we are doing a mock tonight. Uh, Greg Rice says, thoughts on my draft crushes, Bucky Irving and Malik Mustafa. I've definitely come around on Mustafa uh, after watching him. I think he is a nice pairing with McKinney at safety. Bucky Irving is really twitchy playmaker, uh, especially in space. Um can make people miss with that quickness with that agility like he is extremely talented in that facet i don't love the vision and the tendency to freelance between the tackles i think he serves best as a pass catching back uh as more of a satellite player third down player than than obviously a feature guy don't know if green bay is going to want him because of the size that'll be the question so yeah cooper does have unreal burst for sure um, but yeah, it doesn't matter if you're reacting. That's, that's the, that's tough. And that, that, you know, safety is a little bit like that, right? Instincts versus range versus processing and all that. Um, so yeah. And, and yeah, the block shedding is the problem. I think, I think that's the biggest problem with Cooper really. Um, just because like he, he has to dip around, he has to get around blocks. It can work. Nick Bolton has made it work decently. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's the struggle with Cooper, especially. Yeah. Jets are not a great spot. They've got a lot of guys that are, um, coming off injury, um, and don't quite stay healthy on their football team right now. I still think, I, I think the Jets are going to take Bowers at 10. I do. Rod says Newman needs to go. I know Omer was talking about that. Yeah. There needs to be a lot more on the interior so um there's Roy says he uses he says sees read better using a speed than yak and route running not super burning but i think if there's enough sneaky speed though i think he can be he can be used there mitchell equals wilson but a tall version of it less twitchy that's an interesting take by Irish joy there i like that um packers supposedly have interest in uh in Mustafa. 
Again, cool argument, bro, with the stats. Watch the film with Garrett Wilson and tell me he regressed. Like, like truly tell me he regressed. Look in my eyes and tell me he regressed. It's just not true. <laughs> Sorry. It's just not true. Um, oh, I got you. I got you, Joseph. Uh, Mark Sawyer says, unpopular view, but I say make offense great and then just double plug a couple holes on defense. Day three. Yeah, but I'd like to get one of the top linebackers pair him with a later guy on day three. I, I think they can't just go linebacker on day three and feel comfortable there unless they don't like any of the top guys, right? Uh, but yeah, Sumataya Leggett, Mark Sawyer throws in there. Brooks, of course, running back. Dominic Pooney is, is one of my favorites for sure as well. Tackle guard versatility. Um, Torrey is a dog. Freddie, Freddie, good to see you. I don't know about that. Um, they need to pick up linebacker like they did tight end, says, says Robin. Yeah, I like that. I like that for sure. McDuffie's really good. I think he's, he's solid. I think he's a good depth linebacker. So, um, not running off Watson. I know there's a lot of discussion about that. Um, what is going on with Eric Stokes? It's just gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what they think. Uh they're gonna there's gonna be a lot of the biggest tell with how they feel about Eric Stokes and, and Valentine is gonna be how they address corner of the draft or if they do it at all. Right. So yeah, I mean it is a good start to camp, no doubt. It's not a draft need, but if there's value, I'm not opposed to to selecting it with that value. Uh, Wilson's a good linebacker. However, it looks like a safety, not middle linebacker. I think he has injury. He does have injury issues. That's for sure. And I think that might be the, the biggest kind of, kind of turn off. So I don't know where you're getting this absolutely nonsensical number. I would go back and try again. Um, okay. So anyone think they'll go offensive lineman in the first round? Yeah, I think, I think it's very possible. Yep. Um, you know, anyone, anyone like anyone with that Graham Barton's been talked about a ton. Jack Smart Johnson's been talked about a ton. Fatanu, if he falls from Washington, I think is, is part of that as well with that positional flexibility. I feel like you, you see offensive linemen to Green Bay in, in, in more mocks than you do anything else at this point. So I think a lot of people, a lot of people, the media are, are pretty much on board with that. Um, for sure. Like, I think. Depends on who you talk to in, in the in the draft media industry, but I think most would say that they think they will if the value is there. Rajan says, "Sure, up the offense first. Let's pull up the mock draft right now, um, so we can get that get that rolling here." Um, yeah, uh, SDM forty says linebackers keep getting smaller. Yeah, that that is very very true. Would love to see a team go big brain and say we're putting Chop Robinson. Uh, at linebacker, I, I think, I think that would be uh, that would be really cool with the with with the size like that he has, because yeah, linebackers are getting smaller, and that's it, to, to play the pass, and and so teams are really gonna have a heavy focus. I think you see the Rams making this positional shift right now, of like, yeah, we're just gonna get Maulers on our interior offensive line because you guys are getting smaller uh, at uh, at linebacker. We can we can push you around in the run game. I think the Rams are smart to make that move. So they could go to offensive tackle. I doubt it. That would be unfortunate if they didn't. The Packers ever use Caleb Jones, or is that not going to happen? I just feel like it's not going to happen personally. Um, Prince Capsison says, I have running back as a higher need than most. Um. Don't want a repeat of last year's run game if Jacobs misses any time. That's that's very fair. So many picks, BPA. Let's uh what's up, Smitty? How you doing? What's up? Um Rajen says Wisconsin changed their offensive system last year. I think hurt Allen and Bortolini. Yeah, I I think so. I don't know. Allen. I don't know. Allen sometimes looks nimble, sometimes not. So, um, 
yeah, that's Al, Braylon Allen's a tough one to go back and forth on. I think I'd just rather them get uh, someone who's less than 235 pounds to play uh, to play running back for Green Bay. I, I just I, I think Braylon Allen be, would be fine, but I'd rather get a foil to what Jacobs and Dylan do. So <laughs> that's funny. That's funny, Mitch. Says that. Uh, this is guilty pleasure. I watched a ton of Cowboy Packer uh, playoff reaction vids. It says, who is Dobbs and why is he so open? Um. Oh, are you talking about... Oh, you're talking about Olave. Yeah, I think I'm in a little more agreement there. Yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay. Um. That's so funny. That's so funny. People are like, who is this? Who is this guy wearing 87? I think it speaks I think it speaks to the development of Dobbs in year 2 as a route runner which I definitely was was pretty critical of him uh, in in year 1. I think you could tell there were a lot of routes where he was just kind of his pacing you could just tell he was thinking a lot more uh when he was running some of the comeback stuff that that Green Bay wanted him to do it felt like he was kind of like in his head trying to to count out steps and like okay and even yardage as well and it was like all right this is where i have to break I need to plan for breaking here and like when you're thinking that much and not running the route i think it contributes to that slower pace and i think he is has definitely cleaned that up so yeah this makes a lot more sense olave not wilson makes a lot more sense all right really quick before we do the mock i just want to bring these up uh, because Goody was at the Missouri Pro Day. Uh, Ennis Raystraw Jr., obviously one of those top prospects there. A little bit smaller, right, than than the Packers have traditionally gone at corner. Uh, but if the – I don't know if it was him. No, that, that wasn't him. But it was interesting to see if there are any other updated Pro Day times from him. They might even be out there now, and I haven't looked. Um, but very interested to see uh, – what happens with rake straw? It might have been just Goody kind of confirming athleticism stuff with some of these guys who someone someone said that. Someone said that. And I don't remember. Someone said it on Twitter and it goes, might might just be kind of confirming. Like Darius Robinson was another, like this athletic testing is really good at defensive tackle, right? At 285. It wasn't really good at defensive end at, at 285, right? The testing wasn't what many were hoping for it to be. Maybe Goody just checking him out, right? Robinson, see how does this guy move close up in person at, at the Missouri Pro Day? How does Rakestraw move in person? I think that would be interesting. The other one is Javon Foster, right? Who I think, you know, maybe Green Bay sees, you know, some guard tackle versatility here. He has not played at inside at all in college. 2,765 snaps at left tackle, 154 at right tackle. But you see these, like, again, PFF, not end all, be all. Um, but you see some some pretty good stuff here uh, in terms of the pass blocking, especially you see his run blocking the last couple seasons. Two of his three have been have been really good. One really solid. Like maybe this is how you, who Green Bay is there to look at and say, OK, is Javon Foster, you know, maybe didn't have the best senior bowl. But like, how do we feel about him, uh, you know, long term as a potential tackle, maybe a guard? Um, in Green Bay, and I and I don't remember what his official numbers were. I don't think he's quite three nineteen, if I remember correctly. I think he's more. He might be closer to three ten, but yeah, just some guys at the pro day who I think uh, obviously Green Bay could be interested in. But yeah, um, Mark Sawyer says I think one of the oh my gosh, we're talking receivers. This is crazy. Did not think we were going to do this this much tonight. I think Packers one of a few teams that have luxury of using Leggett appropriately. Run scary fast, catch a ball every now and then. I think Leggett is what people wanted Mingo to be. That's what I see with him. Watson definitely demands attention. There's no doubt. It does help other people. Um, I, I feel like there's a big possibility this year of Jets Pack or Super Bowl says WM. WM, how are you doing? Good to see you. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, the Jets just got to stay healthy, and I just, I'm not sure they're going to do it, right? It's almost it's almost like at this point it's kind of like yeah the Chiefs are going unless somebody somebody knocks um, knocks them off the pedestal at this point. Who do you see as possible values at three tech in the late rounds? I think Christian Boyd from from Northern Iowa is one of them, right? I don't know where he's going to go. Maybe he becomes a round three pick when all is said and done, but 
he's certainly one of them that I think you have to pay attention to as a three tech, right? Um, so other than that, like I feel like Michael Hall is going higher than we think, right? You, you you've mentioned Fisk already as somebody who's probably going higher than we think. I think that's that's true. I don't know. Leonard Taylor and Dwayne Carter are interesting ones where it's like they could be, you know, later round picks, but maybe not. I think I think Boyd's probably the best one to look at. Um, I'm trying to I'm going through the consensus big board in case I miss. I know Miles Murphy from North Carolina has met with them, has met with Green Bay. Other than that, maybe one of the Auburn guys, perhaps. We'll see. Logan Lee gets interesting because I think his size stuff and the athleticism stuff was good. Obviously, Gabe Hall is another one that's that's kind of in the uh, from Baylor is is kind of in that Fisk Michael Hall tier. Okay, let's uh, let's start this up, shall we? Yeah, it was interesting that Goo did choose Missouri over Michigan. Maybe something, but again, it could have been checking out Ray Straw and Robinson to seeing if they're the guys, and he's already confident in some of the Michigan guys already, so that that's very possible as well. Um. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Greg Rice said we st- we start it. Rod's not big on still big on Cooper standing around out of place. It's fair. Do you think the lesser schools get the same attention from PFF? I do because I think when you look at Carl Brooks, when you look at Christian Boyd, and some of these guys, I do think they're giving them uh, enough attention. WM, there was there was a Miles Murphy defensive end from Clemson that that. that uh, Green Bay was linked to a decent bit, right? If they went edge in the first round, which they, of course they did, uh, but the Bengals did take him. And this guy is uh, <laughs> the defensive tackle from uh, from North Carolina. So yeah, same state or not same state, um, same area in the Carolinas. So that's yeah, a little bit confusing, but it, it is what it is. Yeah, defense. Yeah, the defense could be good. Tyron Smith, Williams, and Moses are. Guys, you have to worry about with injury. Same with Rodgers. So, man, Mark Mark Sawyer out here spoiling the mock. Just kidding, but yeah, I, I think I think Pooney is is somebody I do want in the mock. Peyton Wilson scares Rod. That's fair. Yeah, Hall and Lee. Lee has just not talked about as much. That's that's it's interesting. We talked about Gabe Hall, and I know Lee wasn't at the Senior Bowl, so there wasn't as much to talk about with him. But like, it's kind of surprising that that he isn't being talked about a lot, even after the even after his showing at the combine. All right, let's roll. Let's get this. Let's get this sucker started here. All right, seven rounds. We'll see if we move back. Um, you guys can throw your input in there. Oh wow, it's uh, not every. Oh wow, this is not every day. What happened? What happened here? Latu went before Mitchell and Thomas went. Barton went high. What did happen here? Apparently, we're just getting lucky. Just not a tackle. Did they really? That's kind of wild. I mean, they're both. I mean, if they were both in that area, it makes sense. Okay, so a lot of lot of nice options here at twenty five. Cooper to Gene, Johnny New, Nate Wiggins, Jackson Powers Johnson. I know a lot of people are going to want me to go Jackson Powers Johnson here. I just don't think I'm going to do it. Um. Uh, yeah, I know. See, DeGene and Wiggins are getting a lot of love here. Um, I've taken Newton in a lot of mocks recently, so I'm going to I'm gonna, gonna stay away from him here just because I've done that so much recently, and I don't want to, to do it. Let's, uh, Chris, I knew there was going to be somebody who wanted him. I'm not going to do it. I'm, we're going Cooper DeGene. We'll figure out where to play him later. I just i I feel like that is that's as good as it gets right there. I yeah I I get it. Wiggins is a stud. He really is. But I'm gonna try and stay a more predictive than just kind of like grab the guy I I would like to take. Wiggins and 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 uh, Alexander would be sick. Be awesome at, at, at the corner duo. That's interesting, Mike. Why is that? I like Wiggins, but he hasn't played man. I think the biggest thing with Wiggins, truthfully, is just play strength. Like I think he's he's good enough. You know, I, I know he hasn't played a lot of man, but there's nothing about like athleticism traits, any of that, that where I'm going, 
oh, like he can't play coverage X or coverage Y. I, I think he can do it. I think it's just a play strength issue. Is is really his biggest thing? And and yeah, I'm not sure the the weight is going to be a very a very goody thing. So. Okay, that's that's fair. Not a tackler. Yeah, I think I think the best tackler at the corner position is um is uh uh Terry and Arnold. So yeah, Wiggins did gain about nine pounds. I don't know if he was doing that just because NFL teams kind of saw him at 173 the combine and go, oh, you know, you better you know get the, the weight up. We're not that interested, or if it was true that he actually did get sick during the combine, which was something that that, that was mentioned as well. Oh, they updated their formula. Okay, yeah, because I know DeGene was like going super high, which I don't think a lot of people thought was going to be the case. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, WM. We not we might not be playing DeGene at corner. Don't forget. Might not be playing him at corner. Might be playing a little bit of strong safety in this defense. Or be flexible enough and interchangeable enough potentially with McKinney to play, you know, kind of either or, and you could kind of do that little rotation stuff. Could be fun. Could be fun. Wilson here though, at 41 Wiggins is my favorite corner after top 15. Yeah, I, I think so as well. I think he's probably going to be corner three for me, him or McKinstry. Um, yeah, I, I think Wiggins has, is, is a better athlete on film and I don't think he is, um, I don't think he has the the issues recovering, you know, down the field that McKinstry does. So I do, I, I like, I, I do think he is probably corner three. Uh, Mike's the trades back. If he does go in the first, yeah, yeah, I think that's the question. He is listed at corner, yeah, but I do think there will be plenty of teams, including Green Bay, um, that we value that value at safety. Uh, let's take a peek around offensive line. There's not a lot of old line there that I'm like absolutely dying to get. Should we take Peyton Wilson for funsies? I just don't think this is going to happen anymore. Not at 41, which stinks a little, but like, you know, Frazier, I mean, this wouldn't be bad, right? Kool Aid with the Gene. The Gene plays safety. I vote. Let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes. Wilson is solid, but not long term. Give me Wiggins is solid, sorry, but not long term. The fact that Wiggins is sliding, yeah, I don't know why that is the case. Um, okay, you've been sick. Yeah, I, I know that was reported. So, O line, do you think we can get a safety with a third pick? We could. We could. Um, let's to go Colson. Dejean's ratings at safety. Here, let's go back. I don't think he's played like a lot of true safety. He doesn't have any deep. He has one deep rep, according to this. Um, obviously, a lot of corner reps, a decent bit of slot reps, and some box reps. And we try him at corner at first. Um, but yeah, Wilson's hard to pass. Colson or Wilson, JPJ at right guard wouldn't be bad. I hate Kool Aid for 25, love him at 41. I like doubling on DBs early. Yeah, see, this is what I mean. Like, him playing every secondary spot, including slot, gives you this opportunity that I'm about to do right here because I just don't see. Like, I like Wilson. I feel like Newman might be off Green Bay's board at this point, at least in this spot, to the point where it's like, ah, eh, screw it. <laughs> I did this whole thing about, oh, yeah, take trenches early, take trenches early, and then I'm not doing it. He hasn't, but he's played in the box. We're going to try that. This is what we're trying. We have gone, we have gone Cooper to Gene and Kool Aid McKinstry with the first two picks. So, um, that would be that would be McKinstry, Greg. Yep, that would be McKinstry. So, yeah. Anyway, now, but now Mike wants to go linebacker. Hmm. Interesting. Roman Wilson available. I see. Anyway, um, okay. So, I think we are going to go Junior Colson here. I really want to take Haynes, but I have a plan. So we're going to go. We're going to go Colson. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. But let's uh, 
Let's take Colson. Um, Joseph says don't take Wilson or Colson at at forty one. Good news, we're not doing that. Um, everybody says we have to go. I really want to take Amagaji. Really want to take Amagaji. Um, but I do think like kind of where you're seeing is I think he's getting better at tackle, and it's going to be hard to uh, push push him inside at all. Haynes gives you a little less. Um, <laughs> Prince says Halfley loves you, man. I think he would be thrilled with this start. I think he'd be thrilled with it. Um, I just, the, the one thing about Haynes is, which is fair that if people have pointed out, is the height, right? And the lack of experience at tackle. Like we are looking at exclusively right guard here. We kind of talked about that with Zinter as well. It's just not traditionally what they have done. Uh, we're going to kind of operate under that. I don't think it's that he he can't. I just think that like just would not be utilizing like would not be utilizing his length in the proper spot. To me, he's a tackle. Um oh man. I'm I'm thinking about this. I'm looking down here right now. I'm looking at tackle. There are some guys I like. Oh, I want to take Amagaji. I think we have to do it. I do think we should do it. It's just that's where I value it over linebacker at this point, right? Linebacker to me is okay. Cedric Gray still there, right? Like, I get it. Colson. I'm going to go Amagaji. We're taking Amagaji, folks. They do. They do. But remember, remember, we don't know if Rasheed Walker is the guy, right? We don't know that. And so at this point in the draft, right, we don't know that. We want the premium. Everybody wants the guards. I know. I get it. I get it. I know. There's good news, folks. There's a lot more picks to make in this draft. We're taking Amagaji. And, and I think I think to this point, other than if we want to take guy at the end of the draft, we have at safety, we have pretty much excluded um kind of DB from the rest of this draft. I'm taking Amagaji here. I just I, every time I'm at 58, I just cannot pass. And I know I pass on on Colson. We're, we're we have our eyes firmly locked on linebacker. Trust the process, trust the process, everybody. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And here's exactly why. Dominic Pooney can play guard, has played guard, could easily do that. Also, look at all this. Look at the embarrassment of riches here. Right? Christian Mahogany has played right guard and has played a little right tackle. Not a lot, but, you know, maybe enough. Uh, McCormick, yes. Left guard only but has played it at a high level right so there's that part of this okay um and that's why we went o-line depth you know that's why we went o-line depth i think i'm going to take pooty with one of these two picks the question is what's the other one yeah greg i understand this i understand this i do i get it at the same time I'm just not sure the size is what Green Bay is going to want. Truthfully, I'm not looking linebacker, but I get it, Greg. I, I I get the fascination with Irving as a player. Super elusive. PFF would would agree with this, right? And like has played extremely good ball. I just don't think I'd take him in the third. This is to me, and I know everybody's going to look at linebacker. Folks, we're hoping. <laughs> We're hoping at this point that we get we get our guy that we want at linebacker. I, I think we got to take him here. However, however, I really like Dwayne Carter. But I think it's smart to do this. We're going to take Pooney. I think he plays guard in Green Bay. I think he's a great value pick here, personally. So we'll do that. And then I think what we're going to do is I'm going to reach, and I don't care. I'm not losing out on the opportunity to select Cedric Gray. So we're going to go Gray. Um, 
and we'll see how things kind of play out here. Come on. Yes, I think he's still here. I think he's still here. Maybe he's not. Oh, he is. Okay. So, I think linebacker thinned out. It did, but we got we got Cedric Gray. Mark Sawyer nailed it. We were going Dominic Pooney and Cedric Gray there. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think Pooney becomes your interior player, right? And so then, and then you have Gray at linebacker. Yep, we got him. Yeah, I like Dwayne Carter a lot. Agility scores, they were that bad. That's tough. That is tough. Um, yeah, I, I think that's as good as you're going to do in the third, personally. I don't know if you can do much better there. That's going to be, that's, that's going to be what we, what we like a lot. Um, is Mustafa still there? That's a great question. Let's, let's double check. Let's double check. He is, he is. And Igbari didn't test well at all. Neither did. Grab him in the fifth. This is where I think the athleticism can go a little bit more off the board, WM, right? I, I think this is where you start looking at, like, all right, the player potentially over, like, how he tested in his underpants, right? Like, that's, I think, I think it starts now. Um, No, no, and that I agree. I agree. But I think testing and in, in whatever their athletic formula is matters early on in the draft. It has mattered. And clearly, when they've kind of, straight outside it it hasn't worked for the most part other than for Jaden Reed right but also Jaden Reed I don't the, the the number wasn't horrendous right yeah I think that's an a plus third um yeah we are going to kind of be spoiled day day three is going to stink a little bit where it's kind of like oh we don't have two picks here in this round that stinks yeah I, I agree with this wall loves Bishop I want to see uh, I, I that's somebody I, I I can't wait to watch wall stuff um because I, I I know he he talks about a line a lot. I've learned a lot from him there. If you're not if you're not subscribed to to Wall, I think it's like process to perform. You should be. Um, it's great stuff. Mike loves Cedric Gray. We like that. I think was Bishop there. Yeah, he is. He still is here. Um, I have an idea, guys. So I, I want I want safety to be an important part of this team. I think we might have one. Okay, and I'm just not sure a player like this is going to last much longer. So, what I think we're going to do is we're going to take Christian Boyd. Uh, did anybody notice Evan Williams at the Senior Bowl? Yeah, I'm keeping him in mind. I'm keeping him in mind. I don't know where he's at on this. I didn't see. Did I? Did I, I might have missed him. Uh, does he go earlier now? Maybe he does. Evan Williams going this early? That seems unlikely. That cannot be. He loved Cole Madison, too. Hey, everybody misses. Everybody's going to miss. Yeah, I know, right? Isn't that great? I know. Everybody, Bishop, I get it. <laughs> hey, you know, honestly, I didn't even know he was the Illinois guy. TBH. Did not know that. Yeah. I, I I know it's I again I get the competition thing, but hey, at least look at this. At least look at the final game against North Dakota State, which you can say what you want about them. They're churning out talent. Would have loved to see them do better against South Dakota State, but I think we got to do this. I know the the desire to add another safety. I'm with you there. I just think I think this has to be Boyd. I just don't think we're going to get another guy that I really 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 like at defensive tackle the rest of the way. So we're going to go Boyd. Um, Carl Brooks, same way. Yeah, I, I think it's just another swing at defensive tackle. Love where we're at in the trenches. I still want to add one more offensive lineman, I think. Um, and it might be right here. Uh, so we've got some O-line. I think here, I think our guy's right here. I think our guy's right here. Uh, trade back a couple. I, I just, Greg, I, sorry, I'm not reading these as fast. I'm trying to get through the mock a little bit quick with some quicker pace, but I do think like we'll do another, we'll, we'll do plenty more, obviously on the live shows leading up to the draft. Uh, we're trading down is, is, is an option. We'll, we'll, we'll explore that for sure. 
The only thing, Greg, is that we we've been on here ninety minutes already, and I I was planning to be here on here for like forty five to sixty. Um, yeah, Sundell, Rouse. Are there any slot corners left? I mean, we got one. We got one into Gene. We can do everything. Um, in reality. Uh, man, this coverage race good as tackling is horrendous. I don't know about slot corner. Um, but Jerry and Jones was probably a third round pick. Rosengarten's a lot higher now. Rosengarten's a lot higher on the ranks now. It's, it's tougher to get him on day three. Boyd over Bishop. Yeah, I know. I, I just, the gears are turning. We've, we've got to. We've got Greg. I promise we'll do it another time. I I, I do. Um, the gears are turning right now. Tight ends, sure. Take a look, but I think I know where I'm going here. Unless there's somebody that, yeah. Oh, Mark. Yeah, Mark. We're good. He. I think so, but I don't see him on the thing. That's that's the thing. Um. Safety is shot now. I don't think so. I don't think that it is. Guys, we can always the, the problem with these mock drafts is we can just lean on old reliable. Here's old reliable. <laughs> this is old reliable right here. Like we're just ranked way too low. Old reliable uh Oladapo here. I, I just he's 259th and it makes no sense. Makes no sense to me. I think we go uh I think we go Sundell here. Well, four picks left. We'll take a linebacker. Maybe we'll take a running back. Uh, but I think we go Sundell. I I just like the value too much. Just like the value, just way too much here. Unless there's a I, not to not to uh, vacillate too much. I'm just double checking if there's another interior guy I like. But oh, we should probably do this. Yeah, should probably go this direction, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? I feel like we probably should. Feel like we probably should go the Bortolini route here. Who cares about where he's he's graded now? This is just more interior help, I think. Because I think Sundell's nice, but tackle and center. Um WM, we have taken uh we've taken we took Amagaji at tackle from Yale in the second. We took Pooney in the third. So I think I'm just going to take Bordellini here. Everybody loves that pick anyway. Yeah. I think I think we take Bordellini here over Sundell. Just because I think no, Greg, we have not taken we have not taken running back. We have 2 0 line. But we're going to get a third one here. We're going to take Bordellini. I don't care that's too high according to this. Um that runs us out at O line. That gives us some nice flexibility here with these last four. I know, I know we're concerned about running back. I understand. I understand. I get it. Guys, Carson Steele's sitting way down here. Just saying. So is Blake Watson, who I know is a little smaller. But ultimately, like, so is Ali, who I like a lot. There's a lot of guys down here. I know a lot of people like Frank Gore Jr. Could go, could go that route. Could, could do that. Not opposed. Um, yeah, I just think, yeah, I just feel like if he's going to be there that late, it's tough not to go him over Sundell based on what we have already in this draft. Um, man, you can, can you guys tell him on PFF way too much? <laughs> because I just know where a lot of the players are at. Being one injury away from Dylan as RB1 is not ideal. That is fair. Um, however, however, Uh, yeah, could do that. I just need to see linebacker just to double check. We'll take Frank or Jr. I know he's too small to be a Packer. I understand that. Yeah, we're fine. Let's take him. Let's take him for fun. We're having fun. Friday night. Friday night. Hopefully we can find a Pacheco in the seventh. I feel like we can. You know what? No, I, I'm not being... We're going to find... The Pacheco. Okay. We're going to find Pacheco. Give me. 
Give me Ford potentially. No, no, no. Let's take Frank Gore for fun. I keep going back and forth. I apologize. We'll take Frank Gore Jr. for fun. Grades are good. Let's do that. I wish I wish Lauby was still there. I do. He's usually gone at like the 160 range. Yeah, I just I agree. I can't think uh I just I can't think of a world where they're leaving this draft with 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 just two offensive linemen. And there's Emmanuel Wilson for sure. I think Gore had to be had right there. I do. I think he he had to be picked there. He was he was one of the top guys. Plus we didn't lose we didn't lose any linebackers other than Hopper in between where we just picked. So it's nice that way. That'll give us um that'll give us some run here. As we finish up on this, Jalen Ford, Bookie Watson, Traven Wallace, all still available at linebacker. I know we've only got one. I like a decent number of these guys, um, including Wasau, who you know, the competition grades, not the best. Let's get Bookie Watson with the size. Let's go that route, I think. I think we do that. All right, I'm going to lean on chat here. Oh, yeah, we could find Keaton Mitchell for sure. Um, No, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's do it. Let's take Ford. Let's take Ford. It's right in the, it's right in the sweet spot. Because then, then it's then it's going to be time to take our safety and our running back, and call it a day. I think that's going to work well. Long snapper, that's funny. Who's that doing the ra- Oh yeah, you, you you figure that. Has anyone picked up Dobbins yet? I don't think so. McClellan is decent. Yes. Um. Oh, is Jalex Hunt gone? That's a good question. Yes, he is. We do have you know. Miles Cole, who is 6'6", 278, and has insanely long arms. So that is a possibility. However, I think we're going to do safety and running back to finish this out. Uh, I just, I want the safety more. <laughs> we're taking Oladapo here. One of our favorite moves. Okay, we only lost Rasheen Ali. Oh, no, we took our running back already. What am I doing? We took Gore. Do we want to take another? I feel like we don't need to. Glad I took Oladapo. Uh, Mitch, we did grab D-line. We did grab Christian Boyd. Um, Unless Jalex Hunt can play box safety. Bruiser, pass catcher, tight. Oh, is Eric All still here? Even 11, <laughs> even 11 picks isn't enough. That's fair. Wide receiver? You know, is there a good one? Wide receiver. I, I think so, Donald. I think that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to go another linebacker. I feel like that's just the best. If, if Bookie Watson's... <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. We're doing this. Take one more back? All right, chat. I'll listen to you. Chat, let's talk about this last one quick. Take one more back or take another linebacker? What do we think? If we're taking a linebacker, it's it's Watson for sure. If we're taking a linebacker, we're taking Bookie Watson here. Uh, if we take a running back, it's going to be Steele or it's going to be Watson. For sure. There have been some real high-level seventh rounders. Yeah, if you got a good scouting department, you can hit at at uh, in the seventh round. It's It's doable. Wow, everybody says linebacker. All right. Jesus of the Apes, we're, what we're going to do for you is we're going to get Carson Steele in undrafted free agency. That's what we'll do because he's your guy. That's your guy. So we'll get him in undrafted free agency, and uh, we're going to get another linebacker in Nathaniel Watson here at 255. Yeah, we're going to get Carson Steele as a UDFA. I already already called. already called. We signed him. Let's just put let's put that out there. We, we signed him in undrafted free agency. So here we go. Two Fs on the board. That's lame. PFF, be better. Um, they love the first three. So, yeah, wide receiver does clear out pretty good, unfortunately. However, um, we're looking good here. I, I like this. Go to Gene and McKinstry to start. I think Gene can do a lot of different things for you, and McKinstry plays outside corner. Then you get Kieran Amagaji. 
who has insanely long arms at tackle. Uh, plenty to work with at that position, especially just functionally uh, in terms of athleticism, in terms of power. It, it, the movement skills are good. Like it's just hone your technique, and like this is solid. You have insurance at tackle as well, even after Amagaji and Dominic Puni, who has played there, who played well there last year, but also has guard experience. Cedric Gray, one of the three linebackers we took in this draft. Love that. Don't care about this F grade. Super lame. Not worried about it. Christian Boyd to help the defensive line, I think, is a really nice, a really nice one. Uh, just because he's he's got the the juice as a rusher, plays with good pad level, good power. He's a pocket pusher. And I do think I, I do think that he can come in and be in the rotation early. Bordellini, he's obviously a Packer favorite now. Can pretty much play anywhere you're asking him to. Don't know why that's an F either, to be honest. Um, Frank Gore Jr., you get a running back. You get some a, a dynamic presence there. He's a little smaller than the, what the Packers usually like at the position. But I said it's Friday night. Let's have some fun. We got Jalen Ford, Keaton Oladapo, and Bookie Watson on, on, in round six and seven. Just incredible stuff there. So we get three linebackers. We get McKinney and Oladapo, which I like. But also, you know, just don't forget about DeGene playing a little bit of a little bit of box safety as well. I don't know. I'm just not sure what's going on there because if you look at 33rd team's board, they like Gray quite a bit. Um, just I'm not I'm not sure what it is with Gray. I don't even think the grades are bad. So I don't I don't quite get it, but it is what it is. Um someone said something. Where is it? Oh, Mark Sawyer said Oladapa won't be there. We all know that, right? It's possible, but listen, just it'd be out here manipulating the board like I am right now in PFF Simulator because I know I can get four to Oladapa and Watson on day three at the end of day three and just cook there. Like, that's love that. So, you know. Um, Greg says he likes this draft early. I, I seems to seems to be a consensus that, that the draft early is good. Uh, Mark Sawyer says my only disagreement is at the top Wiggins all the way. I think that's fair. I think that then positions you at 41 for me, at least for Wiggins to go like, all right, what else can we pivot to the trenches then? Which I think opens up the door for like Fisk for um, Kingsley Suamatea from, from BYU. I think it opens the door a little bit more, but this was just way too fun to not give both these cats a <laughs> Dejina McKinstry on the squad. Um, can't argue with the positions taken. That's that's a nice way to. <laughs> that's the is a nice way of saying like, I like the positions. I just don't like the players like that, like that. Um, that's possible. Gray could be that good. Like he could be linebacker one, and I would, I would not, I would not be mad. I, I would not be surprised either. Honestly, WM says no one completing any passes on us this year. We like that. Um. Brian's obviously hyped with Oladapo. Donald says the secondary is stacked. Boyd reminds me of Lowry. That's interesting. I think Boyd is... I, I, he doesn't play as like chaotic as Brooks does, where, or Carl Brooks did, where he's just kind of like just rampaging all over the place. But like Boyd is very... I think just very, very refined in how he plays. Um, can he get, you know... Can he get better in terms of the finer points of technique? For sure. And I think that's you know part of the development process, but I do think he is he's very good. Top to bottom fun class. Um Aristotle says I don't like McKinstry as an attempt to upgrade over Valentine, take Phillips over him. I don't even that you know, I should be paying more attention where Phillips is uh in PFF simulator, to be honest. Um rest of the draft is good. Wiggins over Cooper's a push. Yeah, I, I think it's it's just going to be dependent on what Green Bay thinks of DeGene and whether he can play all five spots in the secondary, which I feel like that's a possibility. Um, obviously, he hasn't played any deep safety, so that's that's the biggest question mark. But yeah, Cooper then gives you a returner. You might have the best return room in the league with with DeGene and with, with Keyshawn Nixon. So that's another little plus there on special teams. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, Greg Rice is totally going to be rocking a dark shirt, Kool-Aid t-shirt. You can't stop me. Uh, SD4 is not all mock drafts or my position. All right. All right. 
Um, Mark wants the run game to get an upgrade for more ball control. I I think we did that. I mean, there was a decent focus on O-line on day two. Then we get another guy on day three. I think it worked out pretty well. Yeah, I think I think Gray plays the Gray's getting the green dot in the helmet. And then I think Quay is playing off the ball, especially in nickel, which is probably going to be more often than not. Unless you want Quay to drop down and like rush as your Sam. But I think you have size and Watson to do that, or Watson can play further off the ball. And then you have Jalen Ford as well. That linebacker was nice with those three adding to the room. It is really nice. Mitch says, do you think the Packers line Gary up outside Van Ness on third downs and flood the blind side? My goodness. Mitch is, talk, Mitch is talking dirty out here <laughs> on Friday night, talking about that. I like it, though. I like that. That would be fun. I, I think it it just gives you options with, like, Brooks and Wooden and and, and Van Ness where they go, oh, yeah, you can just kick him inside and, like, you know, on, on passing downs get really, really, really aggressive. Really, really aggressive. So. Um, I, I like this a lot, top to bottom. I really do. I really do. Uh, he goes in like mid third. Okay. Mid to late second for Phillips. That makes sense. So probably a 58. He'll have to be the pick, which you never know. Um, get to Gene and we don't have to pay Nixon 7 million. Yeah. It gives you potential out there, uh, after year one. How smart is Quay? I, I feel like Quay is just going to be playing better further away from the ball. Do not give him, do not give him the green dot. Let him play in space. Um, where's the wide receiver? House Potato General Manager. Yeah. Um, you know, just didn't the, the value didn't present itself to us in this mock. Uh I got really, I got really excited that we could have DeGene and McKinstry on the same team. Uh, so that just kind of like that was just where my my focus was immediately. And then it was kind of like, all right, we got to get this old line right. We got to get the linebacker room right. And that was kind of the focus the rest of the way. That's 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 why that happened, really. Um, yeah, DeGene on punts, Nixon on kicks. Yeah, special teams. Yeah, I, I do think. And yeah, I do think everybody probably does make the team. I'm trying to think who wouldn't make the team. Maybe one of the linebackers, but they have a lot that they need in the room. So. Yeah, I think they might. Well, Quay tested high in Wonderlick. Did not know that. I just he can test. I just think he's there's a lot going on when you're playing linebacker, especially when you're playing against Shanahan stuff and the, all the motion that's become so prevalent in the league that you just kind of you have to be thinking about a lot of things, but also realizing that there's a lot of you know kind of you know. Uh, eye candy out there. That's what I was thinking of. That 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 can really mess with you, and you just have to be more hyper focused uh, on what you're you're what two things kind of you're looking for in every play. And I think that's um that's uh that's where I'm at with Quay. Um, yeah, talk about it. Like Gary and Ben Ness rushing next to each other would be nuts. Yeah, I I would agree with this. I do think Quay can can kind of can still become something. Um. Edge rushers usually take big steps in year two. Jermaine Johnson for the Jets was unbelievable this year, says WM. I'm interested to see how he, how he, how he looked. After the draft, I'm going to get into like how the rookie classes did and how the second-year guys did. It'll be fun to look at. Seems much better with simple assignments. I think coverage could be d- definitely part of that. Yeah, hopefully LVN does do that for sure. He was too confusing, maybe. I feel like I feel like though they moved away from quarters, Greg, enough where it wasn't as confusing – just maybe didn't have the personnel to run certain things, but so is the NFL going to change kickoff rules? Maybe it's possible. It's possible that they do, which would really help this team with Gene and 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 Nixon on it. So it's a tough, it's tough. SCM, it's tough. Linebacker position is the toughest one to eval because you have to. You don't always know every assignment. Um. And and that's the, the, probably the toughest thing because you have to know what what the D line assignments are for one, right? You have to know what what technique the D line is playing for to know what the linebacker is doing. So there's so many moving parts that affect linebacker that it's it's just hard to do. And I think a lot of people with linebacker focus more on the physical stuff, right? The movement skills, right? The range, how physical you play over a lot of the technique stuff because it's hard to know. 
it is very hard to know what's what's happening on every play, especially for D line and linebackers. Like there's there's certain like things you know in your brain of like, yeah, for an edge rusher, it's like, okay, yeah, I gotta have contain here, right? I have to set the edge. And like understanding that assignment is, is a little bit easier, but also understanding, like, all right, how does the D line play off of that, especially when there's five down linemen, right? How did the D line play off of that? What are then how to where are the linebackers supposed to be off of, you know, oh, if I get out of position, how do you how do you help me out? Like there's so much that goes into it. So uh Mark Sawyer says, um, Glad Packers brought Nixon back with it in mind that temporary rules only temp. Yeah, it's true. Mark Sawyer says wants a high twitch edge rusher to verify to to verify the pass rush. Ellis from Utah. That'd be nice. I yeah. I don't know how they're viewing edge right now. I assume they would just, you know, keep the same formula in terms of like 260 plus 270 on the on, on, as defensive ends. Um and, and they wouldn't be considering guys like Ellis, guys like Turner, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, they can make things really interesting on third down if they want to. Well, from what it sounds like Campbell, the, from Campbell, the coaching had a lot to do with middle linebacker problems. New system could unlock Quay. That would be awesome if it did. Does the change make kick return more or less important? I think it makes special teams blocking important, but also returnability. So, do not remember he scored top 10% of middle linebackers. Interesting. Interesting. It was ironic because Barry was linebacker coach and handcuffed the linebackers. Potential Quay films a hit piece on Barry's defensive schemes. There you go. Yeah, nope. Okay. Yeah, I think Quay took oh, Quay took the S2. Maybe he did. That was two years ago. I feel like we didn't hear. I never heard about the S2 until last year. Maybe that was ignorance on my part. Well, I think there you have it, folks. Uh the mock turns out pretty good. Um and yeah, I, I think uh, I think it's a good little handle on like what the Packers could potentially do. Probably minus the uh, probably minus the Frank Gore Jr. selection. Probably minus that. Otherwise, um, you know, <sighs> yeah. Otherwise, I think we're pretty much in the threshold. So, hope you guys enjoyed tonight. Oh, Mark says, "How serious are you about drafting Chop as a linebacker?" pretty serious honestly um because i think you can play linebacker early downs potentially with but i think you have to you have to know that the processing ability is good uh because i just don't think early down defensive end or outside linebacker is is that good for him they're just going to run at him a lot a lot a lot so that's the that's the only thing that um worries me about about chop because other than that i think you know, I think we're, we're cooking um, with him playing off the ball further and further. But he, he needs to be able to rush the passer as well. But again, it's it's like, you know, the linebacker position, it's it's getting smaller and smaller. It'd be nice to have big guys. Nice to have big guys. Um, Force kickbacks, like a touchback means it goes to the 30. Oh, maybe. That, that might be part of it. I don't know completely. But yeah, I think they did just invest in edge. I think, yeah. I mean, that's what the LVM pick was was for for 2024, more than 2023, for sure. Yeah. Uh, S2 was implemented at the 2022 Combine. Okay. Um, Mike Hebring dropping another $1.99. I appreciate you on the Super Chat. Says, what do you think? What do you think about James Williams at linebacker? I think that's interesting. Obviously, you know, he's played a lot of safety. He's a bigger guy, right? I think 6'3", 6'4", ish, and then two thirty was what he weighed in in Mobile. I think it was similar, I believe, at the combine. I think he's trying to make that move, and so he's still probably at two thirty. He's probably gonna have to play further away from the football. So maybe he's in Quay's spot, and that's, but maybe they want depth there, and, and they they want him to be the depth at at that kind of will linebacker spot to Roman coverage. So maybe it's possible. Wouldn't be mad at it, right? I, I think he, it's just, how, do teams believe he can make that jump, you know, and be an effective pro? But I think this is possible for sure. Yeah, I think the Gore pick is probably, again, it's just not going to be a Green Bay style pick, right? 5'7", 199. It's just not. Um, so 
yeah, I think that's the only that's the only thing about the mock that's like, oh, that's just not probably not. So who's gonna block Parsons this year though, now that Jones is in Minnesota. That's fair. Um I'm a gaji with his with the long arms. That's who's gonna block him, right? Uh thank you, Mitch, for for hanging out. Um glad everybody stayed and chilled for the mock. And we got a lot of great questions. We talked about a lot of stuff tonight, which is good. Uh, I do want chaos with Chava running back. That's a good idea. Evan Williams. Yeah, I don't. Mark, I got to go check back uh, on the on the PFF simulator and see if he's there because he usually isn't. I, I don't think I saw him get picked. So that's something we'll have to we'll have to to look at um, for sure. So that's something I, I will have to look at again because I, I do think Evan Williams could be kind of a combo safety. So um. But I will I will check on that. I will check on that. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Um uh for chilling tonight. Uh so many of you in here. We had some some great discussion about a lot of the pro day stuff and during the mock, I think was was great. Um, so yeah, thank you guys all so so much thanks mike for obviously dropping two super chats this evening um thank you greg of course hope we get it irving though and mustafa yeah and a long snapper you can get a long snapper uh donald dropping some some cheddar in the in the chat love that uh mitch is an og nate nate would know nate how you how you doing how you doing i'm almost ready i'm almost ready um but yeah that's fair wm that's fair he might he might uh, he might um he's probably going to draft one early i'm probably not going to love it unfortunately but it, it probably will happen so thank you mark thanks brian thank you all gore be a superstar of the ufl you're good you're good we're, it's all under the bridge we're all right we're all good we're all good on that on the, on the garrett wilson stuff that's 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 part that's part that's on me that's on me sorry about that um but yeah, thank you guys so much. SDM40, Greg, G's to the apes, Brian, Mark, WM, Greg, all of you guys, Mike, that that hung out this late on Friday, um, and Donald and, and, and so many of you. Uh, it's it's hard to keep up with everybody in the chat. That's that's great news for the channel. So I appreciate that so so much. Um, there should be a lot of videos coming out very, very soon. So um stay uh, stay hooked on the channel for all that. Uh there might be drop stuff dropping on Saturday, Sunday this weekend, which I think is cool. So Hope you guys uh hope you guys tune in for those. Um thank you guys so much. Uh enjoy uh enjoy your weekend. Um and under 5 weeks till the draft. Oh yeah, thank you Chris as well. See you guys um soon. I think we'll be streaming more uh in these final 4 weeks leading up to the draft. So thank you guys um so so much. See you later.